going to make wood Christmas ornaments. These are called icicle ornaments. They're designed by Diana Thompson. She has a number of books on Amazon.com. Excellent selection of different patterns. You cut these out, crease them real sharp, so that edge will line up with this edge on the block. And make sure that we get these lined up square to each other. These blocks have to be absolutely square. If they're not, the pattern will not come out right. This is a piece of scrap pine. It's a piece of two by four. This is basswood. Basswood cuts nice, but it's expensive. So I tend to use pine. Spray your pattern with adhesive. Line that up on that block and push it down tight. The pattern has been glued to the blank. We've wrapped it with a couple layers of packing tape to lubricate the saw blade. And now we're gonna drill starting holes for our scroll saw blade. I've inserted the saw blade and we're going to cut out this first opening. We'll go ahead and cut out these three and these three openings. So we made the initial cuts and we made the cross cuts and removed all of that waste material. Now I'm going to start down here at the bottom. I'm going to follow this outline all the way around till I get to this point. I'm going to try and stay just to the outside of this line. If I don't, there's a good chance that blade will venture over into here and will spoil the ornament by making this wall thickness too thin. Sometimes these are tapered just enough to where they don't want to come out and I don't want to break it but let's see what happens here. Okay so I have this much of the ornament cut out and we want to hold this together put that back in there gently. Okay, now I'm going to put some tape on both sides of this to hold that together. Then I'm going to cut out the other side. As we come down on this, through this second side cut, we're cutting in and out of varying thicknesses of wood and grain. And we want to hold these two pieces together. And I put tape on there, but we still want to make sure that that inside the final product does not shift back and forth or will spoil the ornament. So that's kind of what we looked at before. Pull this piece out. And then we have the finished product. And it looks like it's turned out pretty well. My blade came loose when I was cutting the other side and this part right in here has become a bit thin. And it looks like the, the grain or whatever pulled me over a bit here. So you take this sharp exacto knife, clean up some of these rough edges. Uh, emery board, sand it a little bit, give it a coat of varnish or lacquer, a little glitter, 
this will look quite nice. So this is pine. So now I'm going to cut out the one on the basswood. Before I do that, let's pop this apart. And if we're careful, we can get this one piece out of here. So you can take this on a belt sander, a disc sander, keeping track of your fingers and sand that down to an even thickness and you can actually make another ornament out of this. Examples of flat ornaments made from the scrap pieces. This is the ornament with the basswood. So far it's cut out very nicely, very smooth. You don't get the sudden grain changes like you do with a piece of oak or pine. What can mess one of these up? If you cut inside the line, you start drifting into the wall thickness of the ornament. When you're done, you'll find that you've spoiled the ornament. I cut these out in different directions. Sometimes I'll come in here and I'll make a straight cut up to here off of my uh, starter hole, turn around and back into that slot, cut to this point, back up, cut to this point, maybe cut straight across, get rid of this, and then cut this part out. From the starter hole, I'll cut from here to that point, and from here to this point, back up, cut this way, cut this way, back into here, cut that way, cut that way. Or you can start in one point and spin the blade around and come around. You won't get quite as sharp a point. You can find a natural flaw or crack in a piece of wood, especially on pine or oak. And when you come out, the thing will just disintegrate. There can be a hidden knot or a wormhole or something in there that will spoil it. You try to identify that before you choose it as a blank. If you break a blade, grabs hold of this thing and slams it up and down real hard just about the time you're done. The piece of the blade that's left can grab the wood and cut in here and snap off the, the finished piece. That's very annoying. When do you change a blade? When it quits cutting the way you think it should. I just put a new blade in this. I'm going to come in, I'm going to start here, I'm going to cut all the way around. And I'll put a piece of tape on both sides, just like I did on the other ornament. And then I'll come in and I'll do the perimeter on this one. One thing you have to watch out for, when you're cutting along here, you're cutting through this whole thickness. Until you get to this point. And as you come around the bend, you're getting very thin on your wood. And the speed and the direction that blade will take can change very suddenly. So you have to really pay attention to what you're doing as you go in and out of these varying thicknesses of wood. The basswood is cutting really nice. Scroll saw makes unbelievably smooth cuts anyway, and this basswood is, is cutting out beautifully. It's easy to see why this is a wood of choice for people who do carving. On with the next cut. No matter how many of these you do, no two of them will ever be exactly alike. It's always kind of interesting to see what's going to come out of here, what surprises the wood has in store for you, or some mistake you made. And right now is not a time to get in a hurry. You've got way too much time invested in this at this stage. If it doesn't want to come out. We'll find out why it doesn't want to come out. Trimming up with an X-Acto knife. 
that'll look quite nice. People will ask, how fast can you make one? You should be concerned with how well can you make one first. Making the blank patterns, glue up, drilling holes, cutting these out, you probably have at least an hour invested in one of these. These are the two I just cut out. Same pattern after they've been varnished in a little glitter. I like to leave these natural wood. You can see the wood grain. Doesn't look like a piece of plastic like they do if they've been painted. They're very delicate, quite fragile. If the grandkids or your cat gets hold of them, that's pretty much the end of that. Examples of the different patterns available. I cut these out over 10 years ago. And as long as you're careful with them, they'll last a long time.